Let me show you how to fit an item of clothing to our Genesis figure that isn't working with auto fit. You might come across this that you have an item of clothing and you load in your avatar. In fact, let me just go do this for demonstration purposes and auto fit just isn't gonna work. Open it with arrangement points. There we go. So this isn't gonna fit by default. So this is actually an item that is from this product here by Jeff Studio. These are, I think, 155 clothing archive. There's tons of items in there for literally no money. And it's it's awesome stuff. But of course, we need to invest a little bit of work in order to get this on our Genesis figure and make it functional. And this is what I'm going to show you now. This is a good product because it does actually work with auto fit. You know, if you have, uh, and this is, I think the trousers I'm using are somewhere in here, number 46. If you want to follow along, number 46, I forgot where they are. Auto fitting, you'd head over to 2D pattern fitting, auto fitting, followed by 3D garment retarget draping. And that's going to work with these items. But just in case it isn't, you might be inclined to say, well, I don't know, maybe I'll just go and press uh, the space bar to simulate this. And it's kind of not really working out. I mean, Marvelous Designer is sort of doing stuff, but I can see that the crotch isn't quite low enough. And that's it's just it's just not the, the fit I had expected. And you know, that's that's fine. So the problem is that we don't know what avatar size this was made for. And some often uh, clothing doesn't come with an avatar or a description of what avatar was used. So in that case, we can go and make an adjustment not to the garment, but to our avatar. Let me go and remove my avatar from here. And in fact, just export the item of clothing as is out with export OBJ selected. And I'm going to go and call this pants unfitted. Here we're going to check all patterns and no graphics and trims for the time being. We wanted this to be thin and we wanted this welded and unified UV coordinates. We don't need to worry about this for now, but we'll, we will worry about it for the final export. So this is the garment as is. And here I have my Genesis figure and I'll go and import that in. And this is in centimeter scale. So just make sure it's the same one that you've exported this with. And we can see it's not fitting. So what I'm going to do now is export two versions of my Genesis figure out. The first one is going to be as is in base resolution, just in case we haven't got that on here. That is under general mesh resolution, switch this over to base resolution and just quickly export that. And this is going to be G9 base. I'll put this on my desktop just so that I know where it is. And over here, I'll use Dash Studio Scale, just making sure the filter object is on selected routes. So only the Genesis figure comes out. So now I'm going to go and do my best to adjust the Genesis figure to fit the item of clothing. And then I'm going to go and bring that in, apply Morph Target and grow the figure into the clothing and it'll fit perfectly. So the way to do that is I'll head over. You can use the Shaping tab for that. I prefer to use it all on the Parameters tab here. Under Full Body, under Base, I'm going to try to make it whoops <laughs> I'm going to try to make it slimmer so that's going to be emaciated that'll make that body slimmer and grow more into my garment here it's not quite enough I just need to make it more thinner so there's also body lithe that you can use these are all morphs that are part of the essential shapes bundle so that's Okay, but I think if I just look at the crotch here, that isn't quite fitting. So I think my avatar originally would have been a little bit taller and that's good. We can use the proportional height slider for that. Just make him a little sort of taller. That's kind of the crotch I'm expecting here. So this isn't perfect. You can use sculpting tools to make it perfect. So I could take the avatar into ZBrush, for example, and just go sculpt the figure in. But I'm pretty sure Marvel Designers is going to be able to figure this out as is. But my avatar looks very different than it did before. Well, that's fine. Let's go and export this out again. File export OBJ. And I'm going to call this one G9 Garment Fit just so that I know what that is. And now we go back into Marvelous Designer and load that up. Selected roots, perfect. 
And be creative here. You can use any of the sliders that you can find here. You can bring this into Blender or into ZBrush and sculpt this figure in. Just make sure it's not the garment that you're selecting, that you're changing. It's the figure. And this is the product I was talking about. Genesis 9 Essential Shapes Bundle. That comes with all these body shapes here. The body shapes and the head shapes. And we don't need those, but the body shapes. So that's, that's the ones that I was really using here. There's a ton of others that you can try to get that fitted properly. Now let's go and import the Genesis garment fit object as an avatar. So file import OBJ. And here we're going to go open as avatar. We can use this arrangement points. Just make sure this button isn't selected. And that should come in and sort of fit my garment now. It does indeed. Let's go press space bar to see this getting fitted to my avatar. That doesn't look bad. A little bit of poke through over here that we can probably correct by just grabbing this out. Come on, buddy. You can do it. Over here and over here. There. That doesn't, that's not a great fit, but it's a fit. So that's, that's nice. So now let me go and stop the simulation and go and bring in my real Genesis 9 avatar. And that's, we're going to do this also with file import OBJ. But in this case, so that's now G9 base, the one that we've, that we've imported earlier, which is the shape that we need to actually rig this thing on. Here we're going to say object type. We're going to say morph target. And that will now let Marvelous Designer detect which geometry the morph target is for. We've got Dash Studio scale. Um, frame count, I'm, I like setting this to 60. 30, I believe, is the default. It's the number of frames that Marvelous Designer is going to iterate over these morphs. So I think 60 is fine. Let's go hit OK. And the simulation is on for this. And you'll see that our ugly avatar is now going to go back into the shape of normal Genesis 9 and now the fit is much better. Simulation is still on so if you wanted to go and make additional adjustments here feel free to do that. I think this is working fine and this is looking much better than it did uh, before when I just hit simulate. So sometimes you'll have avatars that are larger and smaller and you really don't know what avatar was used. Sometimes you see clothing like this that wasn't in an A pose or T pose like in a you know in a modeling pose with the arms forward and stuff and you think well that's really bad for the clothing creator to do it that way because it means that without that custom avatar that they had and without the custom pose that they had is virtually impossible for me to recreate that but thanks to Genesis you can go and use this principle and then go and pose Genesis so that its arms and legs fit into where the clothing fits into and use these adjustment morphs so that the figure is always inside as much as you can inside the clothing then export out and use the morph target thing to uh, you know to do this so now we can go and remove the unfitted pants Genesis you can either load a fresh copy or we can just go and uh, reset all the sliders here let that be it. Now we go and export our garment out here. Oh, actually, there's one other thing that you never know how clothing creators have done this. This is a fairly simple garment, but you may come across something where you have top stitches involved. So if you head over here from fabric to top stitch, then you see two of these things are in here. I don't know if they're used in this item of clothing, just in case they are. Select it and then on the right hand side here, have a look under type. Type, if that's set to OBJ, then things like stitches will be exported as geometry and that's extremely dense. So the problem then is that a garment with whatever 100,000 polygons turns out to be like, you know, 5 million polygons when you export it because each stitch is very high rest geometry. So switch that over to texture for now. And you're going to do this one on every top stitch option that you have, just so that we we can still export the top stitch out, but without it being geometry, if that makes sense. You can still do it and then bake it into normal maps outside of Marvelous Designer, but that's maybe not part of this tutorial. One other thing we just need to quickly do here is do the UVs while we're at it. UV editor, we've seen this earlier. We're just going to go and select everything, use this UV packaging option, and then go and say fit to zero to one, apply. And there we have it. Now we've got beautiful UVs. Awesome stuff. Great, that's that. Let's go and export this out. File, export, OBJ. And this is going to be pants G9 fit. We don't want to do avatars. We do want to do patterns and probably also graphics and trims. I haven't really examined that garment all too well. We do want to do thin 
and weld. Just in case you're not aware of the implications, if you say thick, there, there's a little more to it than you know than uh, than meets the eye. So thick means Marvel's designer is going to create a garment piece for the outside and for the inside separately, and that happens under the hood. This means when you import this, you actually have twice the amount of fabric in Das Studio, and uh, that is going to be a problem not only for Das Studio but also for game engines and usually for anything that isn't a static pose. They do this so that you have no problem with the other side of the normals. So what we saw on the collar is a problem because the inside is sewn to the inside, but the moment the collar falls over, you actually see this gray bit, which is the outside of the collar. And some render engines can't deal with that. They don't render it properly. So in Marvelous Designer and in Clo, they do it so that you can define a separate inside shader and an outside shader on your object. Then you have a colorful lining on the jacket on the inside but you have leather on the outside and you couldn't really do that it's not really a feature that exists in all render engines but for our purposes we can't really handle that because then default simulations and all that is going to going to freak out so we're going to have to have it thin in which case it only creates the pattern pieces that we've designed and not a duplicate on the other side welded means that they are welded together on the seams if you don't do that they're basically individual pieces each pattern is a individual piece and if we were to deforce this in Dash Studio, they all just fall apart because they're not connected. UV coordinates is what we've just done. Let's enable that as well and hit OK. And that is that. Back in Dash Studio, let's go and import our trousers here. Pants G9 fit, that's them. We want to do this with the Dash Studio preset. And we run the transfer utility. There's also things I suppose we could have increased the particle distance here a little bit. But I think for now, this is going to work Okay. All righty. Right click on the scene tab, Assets, Transfer Utility. We're going to pick the Genesis 9 figure as our source and the Pants G9 fit as our destination. And I think this one is probably a bodysuit loose template. Let's see if that works. Let's test it out with the power pose on this part. Twist is working fine. I've had so many problems with these over the years. That seems to be working okay. And then side side, look at that. A little bit of adjustment morph correction and we're done. And there's no issues here. I've had so many issues with these things where the legs basically stick together that when you make a movement like this, that part of this garment is being pulled over here as well as the other side. I'm really, really glad that this is no longer such an issue with Genesis 9. It's not even, I don't think I have to fix all that much here. I suppose if you look at the wire texture shade, you will see that these polygons are quite stretched. So this is something like we've seen, this is something where we need to fix the weight maps and possibly get a uh, corrective blend shape morph. But we've talked about that in the previous episode. So this is how we've rigged our trousers. In the next episode, let's take a look at how we can complete the garment and add a pair of boots to it. Stay tuned for that.